Good morning, folks. We've got news in the ground, the sky, and in Earth's magnetic system. We also have space weather ongoing this morning, so let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com and check out the last day on our star in 193 angstroms of ionized iron light. Boy, that sounds interesting, doesn't it? But looking at the sun reveals little other than the large coronal hole, especially as the larger plasma filaments begin turning out of view as opposed to facing Earth. Did have a couple small pops there at the limb this morning. However, looking at the solar wind, you are able to see the ongoing event. Solar wind speed, that's purple in the middle panel, has continued to rise up over 600 kilometers per second, and Earth's slight geomagnetic unrest we showed yesterday blossomed into a low-level geomagnetic storm last night. Reverberations are probable today. And the stream itself does have a while before it disappears. The coronal hole is longitudinally spread, and so we still have at least another day or two inside of the stream. Let's come next to the ground. Top quake of the last day was a 6.2 at blot echo depths of the low velocity zone in Chile. We had also been watching Mexico and mid-range earthquakes released some pressure along with Popo yesterday. One should have eyes up and down the coast. And speaking of blot echo quakes at the low velocity zone, turns out big time science is telling us that is indeed where water can intrude and play a big role in devastating earthquakes beginning around that blot echo depth. Now, in addition to wondering about your local fault zone and your local low velocity zone, I must remind you that tracking water at the low velocity zone is how we predict earthquakes. Keep that one in your mind a moment. Because up next is our top story. Swarm's latest update now includes subtle magnetic changes from Earth's oceans. It's interesting to note the highest flux generated at the European West Coast, the Gulf of Alaska, and around Australia. There is also a considerable upgrade to the focus and detail of the swarm magnetic mapping of the crust. As you're going to see for Australia here, their old magnetic mapping technique output toggling to the new, more detailed analysis. And I also want to note that a cartoon on their release described the critical role of electromagnetism at the low velocity zone in generating Earth's overall magnetic system, which is what we track to predict quakes and their effects above the ground. Let's come to tomorrow's fire danger where the U.S. southwest is under the bullseye with high winds and hot temperatures driving a strong risk situation over the next two days. On the other side of the scale, this is Mecca. Yes, like Saudi Arabia. Some had a great time in the ultra-rare weather event, but others lost cars, homes, businesses, and even some religious buildings were flooded out. Lastly, folks, yesterday I mentioned that we'd need to wait for the next geomagnetic maximum, expected around 2025 to 2030, to tell if a Dalton or Maunder period was in fact coming. But today we have scientists reporting that the entire sunspot cycle can be gauged within the first few months of every cycle. Now what happens afterwards is indicative of the following cycles, and so when the next cycle begins in 2020 or 2021, they will already be able to paint a picture of the entire cycle to come. Come, which will also allow forecasts of the grand minima to ensue almost a decade earlier than I suggested in the previous morning. This is why we pay attention every day. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.55 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.